Hi everyone, it is the top of the hour and the lady in the internet said it's time to start, so we are going to get going. Um, my name is Dane Maxfield. I am a sales and application specialist with Luxendo, a division of Bruker. Um, and first off, I want to thank everyone for attending. I know for some of you it's really early and others it's really late, so I appreciate you uh, taking time to uh, step out and watch this webinar. Um, in today's webinar, I'm going to be introducing you to light sheet microscopy, going through the common setups that um, are presented out there, and then presenting some applications data from each. My hope is that by the end of this presentation, you'll have a better understanding and appreciation for this technique and how it can open some doors for discoveries of your own. Since I am the only one with access to speak, uh, there is a chat window that you can type your questions in below. Um, I'll try and address these questions during the presentation if I see them pop in. Otherwise, I'll address them at the end. If your question pertains to a particular slide, if you could note the slide number, which is in the lower right-hand corner, um, I can address that at the end. So in order to set the stage for this presentation, let's first consider some of the challenges faced in modern biological imaging. And my computer does not want to advance. Where's my mouse? There we go. So researchers are constantly asking increasingly complex questions and developing applications. And this requires um, instrumentation of being able to keep pace. There's been an increase in the number of labs that are utilizing whole organisms, such as 3D cell cultures um, and other physiologically relevant systems. And these provide a particularly unique challenge with regards to imaging. Not only do we have to acquire large volumes of 3D data, as shown in this uh, video that's playing right now, but we have to do this at very high spatial resolution in order to see the details of the sample that we want to. Additionally, we need to do this on a physiologically relevant time scale in order to capture the biology as it's happening. And finally, we have to do this gently enough as to not perturb the system through light-induced photo damage or phototoxicity. And this is a really tall order for any sort of imaging system or modality. Typically, uh, imaging techniques will fall short in one of these different categories, which has really forced researchers to find new and different ways of performing their experiments. And over the last 10 to 15 years, scientists have dusted off a centuries-old imaging technique called light sheet microscopy, which has really re-emerged as a modality that can address all of these requirements. Uh, light sheet microscopy is rooted in a technique that was termed ultramicroscopy, pioneered in 1903 by Seidendorf and Zygmundi. And the original ultramicroscope um, used orthogonal illumination by uh, essentially illuminating with sunlight and was used for visualizing particles in suspension. Uh, Zygmundi actually later won a Nobel Prize for this work in chemistry, for um, this work on colloidal solutions in ultramicroscopy. But this was largely forgotten. It existed in a couple, in a very couple of techniques, but largely forgotten until the early 90s, when the first combination of light sheet with fluorescence came about. And this, in this application, they use this for imaging and mapping the inner ear of a guinea pig. And again, this technique was reshelved for another decade until 2004, when Jan Huskin and Ernst Steltzer published their landmark paper introducing STEM to the scientific community as a technique for imaging live samples with very little photo damage. And this really sparked an imaging revolution and um, we saw light sheet explode over the next couple of years, particularly amongst home builders who were building their own light sheet systems to address their particular applications. And this was recognized in 2014 when light sheet microscopy was named the Nature Method of the Year. 
really signifying the bright future of this technique. Now, what makes this technique so different, oops, I had animations there. Uh, what really makes this technique so different is the fact that we are essentially going to dissect your standard microscope and um, decouple the excitation and the emission pathways such that we are going to excite uh, fluorophores in an orthogonal direction to our detecting axis by using a sheet of light. And by doing this, we can selectively illuminate only the focal plane of the detection axis, hence the acronym Selective Plane Illumination Microscopy. But how do you create a sheet of light? Well, there's two common ways to do this. Um, the first way and the easiest way is to take your standard illumination as shown in A here and then expand it in one direction by the addition of a cylindrical lens as highlighted here, essentially elongating our illumination profile and creating a static light sheet that will stay um, static throughout the imaging technique or the imaging process. The other way of doing this is by taking a point source laser, as down in C, adding some electronics with, with a galvanometer mirror and a scan lens, and then digitally scanning this up and down to create a virtual light sheet, essentially scanning this faster than the camera can integrate. Now there's a couple different beams that are very common for people to scan. The most traditional is a Gaussian beam, as highlighted here. Um, you'll see the Gaussian beam comes to a beam waste. And this beam waste is gonna be very important because this beam waste here is the sheet portion. Um, and that's gonna determine our optical sectioning capabilities of the light sheet. However, you will notice that this beam diverges and gets larger as you move away from that beam waste. And so there's been a lot of recent uh, work towards using non-diffracting beams, such as airy beams, vessel beams, or a lattice of vessel beams as made popular by Eric Betzig's lattice light sheet microscope. However, this still doesn't really explain why light sheet is so special. And to understand the benefits of light sheet, we must first understand the drawbacks of conventional imaging techniques. So let's consider a standard episcopic technique such as laser scanning and focal microscopy. If we want to image the focal plane here in this Drosophila embryo highlighted in red, what we're going to have to do is illuminate from either above or below with a cone of light that focuses to that sample plane. And then in laser scanning and focal, we'll raster scan this point by point, essentially creating an image one point at a time, but in doing so, expose the entire sample to light, even though we only care about the fluorophores emitted from the plane right around the red dotted line. Conversely, in light sheet, what we can do is, if we want to image that same focal plane, we'll bring in our excitation light orthogonally to our detection axis, selectively illuminating the plane of interest, and because we're illuminating all those fluorophores in that focal plane at the same time, we can use an area detector such as a camera to simultaneously collect their emission. And this gives light sheet some um, pretty unique advantages as far as imaging because we're selectively illuminating that plane so we can acquire images much faster. And additionally, we're only illuminating, because we're only illuminating that plane of interest, we are exposing the sample to a, a much less light. In fact, it's estimated that a laser scanning confocal exposes your sample to approximately three orders of magnitude more photons than in a light sheet. And again, this gives light sheets some key advantages over confocal, which I'll hammer home here in the fact that because of the way that we're doing our illumination, we have a dramatically reduced light dose with less phototoxicity and photobleaching. Additionally, we get the optical section in one shot, allowing us to simultaneously collect fluorophores 
or collect emission from all the fluorophores in a focal plane at once. And we do so without sacrificing any optical resolution, making this technique ideal for imaging processes in live specimens. However, as we know, there's an extremely large variety of experimental systems and model organisms. And just as there is no imaging platform that works for everyone's various samples and experimental needs, there is no light sheet that's going to work for everyone. And this has resulted in a very diverse array of light sheet geometries, as high, and some of the more popular ones are highlighted here. For clarity, since I can see my mouse, uh, IO and the blue lines stand for illumination objective, and DO stands for a detection objective. Um, so with all these different geometries here, how do you know which system will work for your sample? Well, there's a couple things to consider. First, your sample size. Because of the fact that we have to illuminate in an orthogonal direction to our detection axis, this places some steric constraints on the size of samples that we can fit between these objectives based on your choice of objective. The second is sample mounting. Um, this, is a, this is something that is, again, depends on the geometry. And a lot of light sheets use water immersion objectives for their optimal properties of long working distance and high numerical aperture. But again, the geometry will dictate how your sample has to be mounted in order to fit between the illumination detection scheme. Third is spatial resolution. So how high of resolution do you need? Do you need something on the order of cellular resolution or do you need subcellular resolution? Again, the steric constraints placed by having to illuminate orthogonal to your detection axis will place upper limits on what objectives we can use. And finally, temporal resolution. Now, at first glance, this might seem like this is something that would be more characteristic of the detector, a property of the camera. However, by choosing a geometry that allows you to see multiple sides of the sample here, like highlighted in C, you'll effectively double your temporal resolution for large objects compared to a geometry such as in B. Now, for the rest of my talk, I'm going to focus on these three light sheet geometries here, a four, uh, four objective horizontal geometry, an inverted geometry, and an upright geometry, which we at Luxendo have commercialized into the multi-view, inverted view, and quantitative view light sheet systems, otherwise known as the movie, INVI, and QV, respectively. And this fleet of microscopes is really geared towards providing coverage for a very wide variety of applications and samples. And I'd like to spend some time highlighting the advantages of each one of these systems and show you some data in order to give you a taste of what these dis different systems can do for you. So let's start with our flagship system, the multi-view spin or the movie. There we go. So this system is composed of a couple different parts. Um, the first and the, the main part of this is the Luxendo Octagon in which we house the four objectives, our two illumination objectives and our two detection objectives. A very popular choice for live cell imaging is illuminating with two 10x.3 numerical aperture water dipping objectives and detecting with two 20x 1.0 numerical aperture detection objectives. However, we do have other objective options available. Just downstream from that is the filter wheels for filtering out whatever particular light you want to send to your detector. And because we don't have an or a, a objective turret like you do on a standard microscope, we have a magnification changer just downstream allowing you to magnify or demagnify uh, the image that's sent to the camera in order to see the resolution that you need. 
and last but not least, on each detection arm, we have a scientific CMOS camera, specifically a Hamamatsu Flash 4 V3. Very high quantum efficiency, uh, 4.2 megapixel camera that we can run about uh, greater than 80 frames a second for each illumination arm. So the way in which this works, which you might remember from the schematic, um, is that we're going to bring in uh, a laser beam for excitation from the two uh, illumination pathways highlighted in green. And that we're also simultaneously going to detect emission from the sample from the two pathways highlighted in red. And I'm going to touch on the benefit of this in just a couple slides, but right now let's focus on the light sheet and the mounting itself. As I mentioned before, we're creating a light sheet by digitally scanning Gaussian beams, and the beam waste of this beam is what's going to give us our best optical resolution. Now, because of the fact that the Gaussian beam, the smaller the beam waste is, the shorter the distance that it is quote unquote sheety, what we're going to do in order to get the largest distance possible is we're going to offset the beam waste coming from each objective and integrate these together, allowing us to create the longest, sheetiest light sheet that we can for the best optimal resolution, optimal optical resolution. And oh, let me jump back here. And right here in the center, underneath that light sheet, what we can see is our sample holder. Now with this four objective geometry, our sample holder um, is going to be a, a four dimensional stage. So the stage is gonna move in X, Y, Z, and also be able to rotate. And this is a very, um, this is very advantageous for samples because it allows us to rotate and position this in whatever orientation is optimal for your experiment. We mount in this sample chamber by placing uh, either a capillary inside that has your sample embedded in agarose and pushed up, such as this Drosophila embryo here, or what we can do for larger, um, larger samples is use a FEP tube. Now, FEP is a polymer that has the same refractive index as water. And because we're using water dipping objectives, this may creates a essentially optically clear way of, of um, holding our sample in place. So to summarize, the four objective geometry multi-view system here created with, um, where's my mouse? There we go. So has us, we hold our sample in between this uh, light sheet by you know, uh, illum or not illuminating, uh, mobilizing it in a cocoon of agarose or in an FEP tube. And this light sheet give system gives us a very large field of view and up to 300 nanometer isotropic resolution. And as I mentioned before, this 4G objective geometry is very advantageous for large samples. And I'm gonna highlight this with this cartoon schematic here. So if we consider uh, a two objective geometry where we're illuminating from the top and detecting from the left, what we'll see is that we're gonna get a great image from this corner of the sample, but we're not gonna be able to illuminate or detect emission from the bottom corner here. However, by adding an additional illumination objective, we can now collect, uh, efficiently collect emitted signal from one half of the sample, but we still have this dark side on the back half. So by the addition of a second detectional lens, we essentially double the amount of information that we collect, allowing us to visualize four views of the sample at once, which we can then fuse into a single high resolution image. And to give you an example of this with a real sample, here I'm showing you a zebrafish embryo. And this is the individual images from each camera of the multi-view system. 
and you'll see on the left camera, uh, we have a great image on this side of the sample. And on the right camera, we have a great image on this side of the sample, but the image quality deteriorates as you go in. However, by taking these two images with our uh, proprietary 3D fusion software, we can create a single high resolution fused image, allowing us to get a great uh, image of this sample without having to take stop and rotate the sample. And so this, this really gives us an advantage as far as speed and image quality because we only have to take one picture to see both sides of the sample. And what we can also do is use this, the ability to rotate, to give us full isotropic resolution by turning the sample 90 degrees and letting us see all four sides of the sample with essentially taking two images, allowing us to create these very beautiful isotropic images such as this Drosophila embryo shown here. And here we're able to acquire two image stacks, each 10 seconds long, and be, fuse them into a single high resolution image. And in fact, this imaging is fast enough and gentle enough to allow us to do this over and over again and visualize very dynamic processes such as this Drosophila gastrulation. So here what you see in the big image is the ventral side uh, view of the Drosophila and the inset up here in the corner is the dorsal view. And we're looking at this embryo starting from early cycle 14. We just watched the um, ventral furrow formation and now we're going to watch this embryo essentially undergo the entire process of gastrulation from start to finish until it becomes a larva and essentially eats its way out of the agarose cocoon. Um, and this is extremely advantageous for developmental biologists because instead of seeing this development happening at static time points, we're watching this as a very dynamic process happening in real time before our eyes and developing on the same time scale as its, as its brothers and sisters would in vitro that were not in the microscope. Now, one thing that is really um, an advantage of light sheet is the ability to take these beautiful descriptive movies. But as experimental biologists, we wanna know, once we know what's happening and why it's happening, the next thing we wanna do is perturb the system. And here we go. So he's gonna eat his way out of this pretty quick and then we'll move on. And so keeping this in mind, what Luxendo has developed is a photo manipulation add-on allowing us to bounce in different lasers for different photo manipulation protocols. So a 405 laser for photo conversion or fluorescence recovery after photo bleaching, or a 457 for optogenetics, or various pulse lasers for performing photo ablation and wounding. And this provides a very um, dynamic and powerful tool for us to study developmental biology and be able to perturb the system in ways that you can't with other light sheets. And as an example of this, what I'm showing you here is uh, root development or Arabidopsis. And the orange-ish yellow arrows are highlighting uh, ablation sites before and after a cell collapses. And these researchers are studying what happens to the root formation if you essentially perturb a cell. Okay. So, so far, I've introduced you to our multi-view SPIM the, in the movie. The next one I want to introduce you to is our inverted view SPIM, the ENVY. And the ENVY has a pretty unique story because this was really developed for imaging some of the most delicate biological samples out there, that is mammalian embryos. And these provide a particularly unique challenge with regards to imaging. Because of the fact that they are extremely light sensitive, 
and you have to maintain culture conditions and stability for days on end in order to watch the embryogenesis. Not only that, but we have to do this in a way that is high throughput enough for us to be able to get numbers that are statistically relevant because of the fact that we're imaging for days on end. And so the solution that we came up with is the inverted view light sheet, the NV. So what I'm showing you here is a schematic of the NV. We'll see that it is a, um, the NV is a single-sided light sheet with illumination happening from a 10x.3 numerical aperture objective and detection from a 25x 1.1 numerical aperture objective. Now, 25x is not a very quote-unquote high magnification. And so what we'll do is post-magnify this with tube lenses for effective magnifications of 32 and 62x respectively. Additionally, with the sample chamber highlighted in the upper right corner, we have full environmental control to be able to maintain these physiological conditions that these embryos like by being able to control CO2, O2, temperature, and humidity, and the stability to do this over days. And I do want to point out this is this very high resolution and high speed light sheet capable of achieving resolutions on the order of 270 nanometers with approximately 160 frames a second. Similar to the multi-view system, we are going to use two scientific CMOS cameras. However, these cameras are no longer um, specific to each imaging arm. And in fact, what we can do with the two cameras is perform spectral separation of our emission channels, allowing us to see multiple colors at the same time. And the sample holder. So this is really what ties this system together. Remember that these embryos, so remember we're working with water immersion objectives here, and these embryos are definitely not gonna wanna sit in water. And in fact, they have this very expensive media that, um, that they prefer. And so the sample chamber that we have come up with uh, essentially uses the FEP polymer I was telling you about here in order to create a physical barrier between the water immersion that we're using and be able to allow the embryos to sit in a small volume of the media that they like so much. Additionally, what we can do is drop these embryos in here. They're held in this trough for imaging by gravity, and we can line them up one by one down the line to allow us to do this imaging in a high throughput manner. Additionally, we've partnered with the Biddy in order to create a disposable chamber that is essentially ready to ship open and drop your embryos in instead of having to pre-sterilize and glue these together. Now to give you so, an idea of what we're, what kind of images we can achieve with this, here we're looking at the mouse pre-implantation oocytes. And what we're gonna see through this uh, video, which is imaged every five minutes for almost two days, is we're able to track these individually, individual nuclei from the very first cell division all the way through the 63 cell state, which again, it takes approximately two days. What's extremely impressive about this is that these oocytes that we imaged we're, had similar uh, cell division timing and similar number of cells as their counterparts that were cultured in vitro and we were able to implant some of these into pseudo-pregnant females and healthy pups were born, highlighting the ability of this technique to monitor cell division with extremely high resolution and minimal to no photo damage. Another popular culture these days is organoids and spheroids. And here, what you're looking at is uh, organoid um, and we image this for more than 48 hours. <clears throat> so we've already seen our uh, multi-view SPIM and our inverted SPIM and uh, the high highlighting applications for each. In the final and the newest member of the Luxendo family I want to introduce you to 
is our quantitative view, our upright spin, the QB. And this system was really made popular um, by some early work from Hari Shroff's group, visualizing C. elegans embryogenesis. And here we go. Give you an idea how this system works. Again, upright geometry. And what we will do is illuminate with two 40X water dipping objectives to get a dual view of our sample. So the way in which this works is we illuminate from one side and detect on the opposite, and then we'll flip the beam path so that the illumination comes in from the detect objective that was the detection access and then goes through the opposite uh, objective, allowing us to get a dual view of the sample, giving us isotropic resolution along the order of about 350 nanometers. Additionally, we have a XYZ stage down here that's compatible with SBS format plates and um, cover slip mounted samples. Similar to the other light sheet systems I've talked to you about, we're using dual scientific CMOS cameras, but uh, just like with the Envy, what we're going to do is um, use these cameras in order to perform two color simultaneous imaging instead of having each camera dedicated to an illumination arm, thus effectively doubling your temporal resolution for the system. And the sample mounting is the thing that um, is really attractive for the QV because not only do we have easy access to the sample where we can bring in patch pipettes, um, drop on drugs, put in electrodes, but we can also use standard cover slip mounted samples, not samples under cover slips because we're using water immersion objectives, but we can grow samples on cover slips put them in PBS or water and image them with this light sheet. And the system is also um, compatible with SBS format plates, which we could spin down and you could essentially have a high throughput screening uh, format available to you. And to give you an idea of what sort of applications data we can collect with this, here we're looking at some microglia movement in a zebrafish brain. Um, the blue is a vascular marker, yellow is the microglia, and we've taken the two orthogonal views. Um, so this has isotropic resolution, and then taking these stacks at two frames a second for 20 minutes, giving us a pretty impressive movie. So here, what we see is um, the three systems that I present, presented today, the uh, four view, multi view, or four objective multi view SPIM, our inverted SPIM, and our upright SPIM, the QB. But what I really want you to walk away with from this presentation is a better understanding of light sheet and how it translates to your particular imaging. In fact, what I really want you to take home from this is that light sheet is suitable for your everyday imaging. And we have different sample mountings that, are very, that can be specific for your experimental needs, and each one of these sample mountings has an advantage. We are also, or this technology is applicable to a wide variety of applications, from imaging live specimens to doing dynamic studies, and it's also able to acquire fast volumetric imaging at high resolution large fields of view with very minimized phototoxicity. And finally, we have a very robust platform for performing photo manipulation on various samples. And with that, I will um, like to thank you for your attention and I can take any questions that people have. Thank you. All right, so we've got uh, one coming in here. Uh, do you have a solution for clear tissues? Uh, yes, we do. Um, the clear tissue solution will actually be uh, yeah, based off the movie system, which we have here, our multi-view. 
and uh, we're going to uh, release that solution here in uh, later on this year. Uh, someone else asked, uh, I'm looking at cell division in HEK293 cells. What would be the best geometry for my application? And that really depends on the, let me go back here a slide. That really depends on the um, end resolution that you need. So I would say the QV and the NV would be um, good setups for your application. In particular, the NV, just because of the fact that we can culture these in the sample chamber here, and it's a very high resolution light sheet, as you can see from this video. Anything else coming in? All right, well, if there are additional questions that people want to um, ask, my contact information is on the bottom of this slide, um, or you can feel free to uh, go on to our FM website and um, get our contact information there and get in contact with us. And with that, I think we will end this. Um, thank you everyone for attending and um, I hope this was very informative for you. Thank you.